so the demo that I'm going to show you today is this beautiful horse eye which is only six by four inches here to um, get something done in two hours it has to be fairly small when you're going detailed so that's what we are doing um, I have pre-chosen my colours and I've got them all down here it's slightly different with pastel because you have more colours to choose from in the first place rather than mixing the colours but you can mix your colours on the paper as well which is advantageous let's get that camera in the right place again Okay, so I always like to start with the eye because um, I like something looking back at me um, and I just find the eye so much fun. So that's where I always start. Now because this um, horse is um, a gingery colour, I'm going to be adding quite a bit of blue where you think it's brown and black to give the complementary uh, feel to it and make the colours um, work better together. So I'm going to start with a blue. This is a very dark blue. I'm using Unison pastels here and they're my favourite pastels. And the chunky sticks can be a little bit difficult to work with when you first start using them but as you progress very quickly you learn how to use them and the biggest problem that I hear people say is that they can't work out where they're putting the pastel on the paper because um, the pastel itself is in the way but you can get around that by putting your head to the parallel to the paper and um, then you can see exactly where you're putting it but as you progress you can you can just work out where you're putting it. it it's not a not an issue at all you just kind of learn where it is it's a bit like if you're driving a car when you first start driving the car knowing where your wheels are whether you're going to hit the curb or not is is quite tricky and you're always worried that you're about to hit the curb when you're parking but as you progress you know where the wheels are so it's it's just like that I hope that was a good analogy <laughs> can't tell by your faces <laughs> okay so I'm using a little rubber blender here and um, this is just pushing the pastel into the paper and moving it about. If I wanted it to move about a little bit more I can use this tortillon. It's um, paper rolled up into a hard stick and it moves the pastel about a little bit more if I use that. See there moving it about. You can press quite hard on the paper you don't have to be soft with it. This is a camera lens dust blower it just directs the particles down the page rather than wafting them into the air. Right, I'm going to add some brown to this eye. So when I put the pastel on first I just do it very lightly and gently just to make sure I'm in the right place and the right colour. Go back to my dark blue and add some blue in with that brown. And this is how you can mix your colours on the page. Someone in the waiting room, I'll just let them in. Going to add a bit of black to that. I'm 
it's very dark down here as well and when you're doing photos that are so detailed you really need to get your image printed out on good quality paper I'll just show you here the difference between poor paper and good paper for printing you see this area here you can't really see it that well but on this one you can see so much more detail in here because this is proper printer paper like photographic paper Right down here there's a bit of light coming in the eye, so I'm just adding that, because this is what we want to see, the light reflection in this eye. Okay, so now I need to get the edge nice and neat and perfect, and whilst I'm using a pencil, what I'm also doing with this pencil is using it like a blender and so it's moving the, the pastel, soft pastel underneath as well as adding the pencil, pencil, pastel from the pencil as well. you can see that no I don't think you can see you can't see the photo <laughs> I'll show you the photo reference again this eye here it's got some lovely light just here coming all the way around there so we're going to get that on now as well I've got a very sharp that one there we go a very sharp cream pencil to get that on round the edge I've been doing Zoom classes since the beginning of lockdown in March. That was a bit of a sudden realization of what was all, all was happening, and the fact that my art class, most of the ladies in my class were all highly vulnerable, and um, they had to self-isolate, and um, they were they were the ones receiving all the letters to tell them that they really had to be very careful so very quickly I realized that I had to do something and um, so I figured out how to do the zooming and managed to get them all on zoom either over the telephone or or talking them through it on the messenger um, and uh, remarkably we did it and I think about 95% of the class joined me on Zoom, so it's been wonderful. I'll tell you, it did not give me some palpitations doing it at first. It was really, really quite new to me, and I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, and gosh, it was hard. But now, it's second nature, thank goodness. And I've got all the tech right because 
very hard to find the answer to something when you don't know how to ask the right question because you don't know the the technology <laughs> but finally I did get there and now that's why I'm recording on two cameras because the um, zoom is good but it's not quite good enough when you are trying to teach and it really depends on what you are what your internet's like so I wanted to have a backup as well which is what's available to you after the class the next day I'll get that on um, YouTube and you can view it on there in full quality so I'm just putting on some of the bright reflections that you can see now in the poor quality photo you can't actually see these at all. I'm just going to make them a little bit bluer. Don't forget you can ask me any questions you like in the chat and I just glance over every so often and I can reply. up all the edges now we've had people join the zoom classes from all over the world like um, well I think the, the best one is Aruba uh, but we've had America and Australia France, all different parts of the UK. So it's been really interesting listening to everybody's experiences of what's been happening in their area and the lockdowns and things. Just looking for a pastel and I can't find it. It's ever so small. It's gone for a walk because it's so small. Where's it gone? Ah, there it is. There, you see it's small. <laughs> right, so this is a grey for the skin that you can see under, under the fur. Uh, coat hair so it's a kind of a blue grey which is in keeping with the the blue that I want to use instead of using black or grey pencil over the top either to move it about or or add more pigment on top but this um, blender has got a bit of blue on it already which will be really handy just to mix in there and another thing you can do is just wipe the pastel with the tortillon and add pastel that way which is I find that quite a, a really useful thing add colour in small places like this and with student level pastels you can do this but you have to rub your pastel on the paper 
on a, on a scrap piece of paper first and then pick up the pastel because they're not just not quite soft enough to do this with. If you want to clean these, you have to use a bit of sandpaper just to wipe them off. And also what you have to do when you use the sandpaper is just pull in one direction because if you do it backwards and forwards you end up um, unravelling the, the tortillon. Mm -hmm. 